Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about the skincare claim of anti-pollution. Is there any truth to the idea that skincare products can protect you from pollution? And why would you need your skincare products to protect you from pollution? Pollutants do in fact reach the skin, not only at the top of the skin, but also the deeper layers of the skin. And we have learned that there are numerous adverse consequences to the health of the skin, which I'll get into later on in today's video. But not only your skin, uh, pollutants also can impact your cardiovascular system, your respiratory system, and have other untoward effects on your overall health. One of the best defenses against environmental stressors like pollution is honestly your lifestyle factors. Things like exercise, getting plenty of sleep, not smoking, and importantly, your diet can really empower you and your skin to fight off some of the damage of pollution. Eating fruits and vegetables and staying away from sugary processed foods can help your overall antioxidant levels in your skin and make you better equipped to handle free radical damage from pollution. Another great way to get antioxidants in your diet is by drinking green tea. Today's video is sponsored by Peak Tea. Matcha green tea is rich in the antioxidant EGCG, as well as numerous other polyphenols that fight off free radicals generated from ultraviolet radiation from the sun, as well as pollution and other environmental stressors. Peak Tea is your daily antioxidant powerhouse for radiant health. They have over 20 different flavors, so you're sure to find something your taste buds love and your body craves. Now, Peak Tea delivers concentrated antioxidants and nutrients to support healthy immunity, digestion, and weight management. Their cold crystallization technology extracts the active ingredients and superfoods at their maximum potential. Peak Tea triple toxin screens for pesticides, heavy metals, and toxic molds. Peak dissolves in seconds in cold or hot water, so you can drink it on the go or add it to smoothies. There is zero prep. It's so delicious. Peak won three gold medals at the Global Tea Championship. 15,000 five-star reviews, more than any tea brand in the market. They also have a 30-day satisfaction guarantee, so you either love it or you get your money back. And the reason I love Peak Tea so much is the quality of the tea is unprecedented. They start at the source. It ensures the highest antioxidant level in the tea. And it's really nice because you can just add warm or cold water and you have your tea. So there's no tea bag involved, which I really like. Matcha tea also contains the amino acid L-theanine, which can help in stress levels and improving mood. These things play a huge role in our ability to handle environmental stressors. When we're stressed out emotionally, it can leave us fatigued, drained, and as a result, we're more vulnerable to environmental stressors. Yeah, Peak Tea ensures a very high quality product through their cold crystallization method. You're really getting the highest level of those bioactive tea compounds that you are looking for to help you, and it is a great tasting product. I've tried many matcha teas over the years, and I keep coming back to Peak Tea because it's super smooth, it's not bitter. I mean, you're really getting a very, very high quality product here. And if you guys want to check it out, you can use my code, which is in the description box, Dr. Dre, and get 5% off of your first Peak Tea order. They have a ton of other fantastic teas. I really love their turmeric tea, another great beverage for antioxidants and taste. It's very delicious. And their ginger tea is another fantastic one. So check them out if you're in the market to try out some new teas. I highly recommend Peak Tea. What exactly is pollution? Well, airborne pollution is defined as any compound, whether it be biologic, chemical, or physical, that modifies the uh, natural characteristics of the atmosphere. The main outdoor pollutants that we are exposed to come from gaseous compounds like carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide, as well as particulate matter and heavy metals. In terms of your skin, one really scary thing is that the levels of uptake into the skin of pollutants have been shown to be very similar or comparable to the same levels that we are exposed to through inhalation. The pollutants that we're exposed to in our environment, they settle on the surface of the skin and they can penetrate down into the deeper layers, the dermis. But unfortunately, you can also get accumulation of some of these compounds in the dermis from uh, systemic exposure. So through the inhalation route, uh, then the pollutant, pollutants can reach the, the dermis that way. So it's not only what you're exposed to on the surface of your skin, but also what you inhale in your environment. 
And what is the consequence of these pollutants to the skin? Well, namely, they increase the production of free radicals quite drastically. And these free radicals destroy the collagen in the deeper layers of our skin. They suppress the immune system within the skin, making it difficult for us to fight off infections and to fight off the formation of skin cancers. But what is very, very clear is that not only does pollution do this, but we also know ultraviolet radiation from the sun does this. The two together are a double hitter to your skin. In addition to increasing reactive oxygen species within the skin, pollution also depletes levels of vitamin C and vitamin E, two key antioxidants in our skin. For those of you who suffer from acne, pollution has been shown to increase the levels of oxidized squalane. Squalane is a natural unsaturated fatty acid within human sebum, and when it becomes oxidized, that's thought to play a role in the pathogenesis of acne. Interestingly enough, epidemiologic studies suggest that living in an area with a lot more pollution is associated with a higher risk of having acne, and it may be related to the oxidation of squalane in sebum from pollutants. People who smoke tobacco have probably taught us the most about the effects of pollutants on the skin because smoking tobacco is in effect depositing pollution on the surface of your skin. Tobacco smoke has numerous uh, pollutants within it, carbon monoxide, etc. Tobacco smokers have a much higher degree of what's called solar elastosis, which is basically um, photo aging in comparison to non-smokers. Remember what I said, it's the combination of UV plus pollution that is a double hitter. And nobody illustrates that more than people who smoke tobacco. They have much more prominent signs of photo aging. Additionally, tobacco smokers have been shown to have a higher incidence of squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. Squamous cell carcinoma of the skin is a skin cancer that is due to ultraviolet radiation exposure. It's very common but they're at an even higher risk, probably because they are dumping more free radicals into their skin through the pollution exposure from the tobacco smoke. There's actually an interesting small um, study that showed, uh, that looked at women who lived in urban environments with a lot of pollution versus rural environments with less pollution. For every one unit increase in traffic related pollution, that was associated with more prominent signs of photo aging, namely more uh, lentigenes, which are uh, basically sunspots, as well as more prominent nasolabial folds in comparison to those women who lived out in a rural area with less pollution. I recently did a video here on YouTube about the skin microbiome and its importance in overall skin health. One of the things that clearly can affect the skin microbiome is pollution. There have actually been studies that show that uh, the skin microbiome, the, the relative abundance of microflora drops dr drastically on the forearm at least after exposure to environmental pollutants. Earlier I mentioned that pollutants have been associated with increased levels of oxidized squalane and more acne. There was a study that compared individuals living in Mexico City versus Cuernavaca. Interestingly enough, people who live in Mexico City have oilier skin than people who live in Cuernavaca. And it's thought to be perhaps related to the levels of pollution. So if you live in Mexico and you're in, in the city, maybe move move out to a rural area, especially if you have acne. I don't know if that'll make a difference, but these studies would suggest maybe it does. In addition to acne, we also have considerable evidence that the levels of pollution in your environment impact the severity of a disease called eczema or atopic dermatitis. People who live in more urban areas tend to have worse eczema and it's thought to be due to perhaps exposure to pollution. In addition to their skin disease, a lot of people who have eczema, they are at a higher risk of having um, asthma as well. Many people with eczema have asthma and asthma severity is another thing that is correlated with living in an urban environment with more pollution. Now that I have perhaps terrified you about your daily commute and traffic, uh, that you're gonna you know, have all of this wrinkling and whatnot from pollution, what exactly can you do about it? Can skincare products save you? Truthfully, right now, I see a lot of products that claim to have anti-pollution technology and anti-pollution ingredients. As it stands now, as of the making of this video, there is no ingredient or set of ingredients that have been substantiated to actually protect the skin from pollution. So you can just ignore those claims for now. But given what I've told you about how damaging pollution is to the skin, we really should be putting a lot of focus into 
uh, into product development to create skincare products that truly do protect us from pollution because it's obviously playing a big role in skin aging and skin disease, just like ultraviolet radiation. But what exactly is being done to advance the field of skincare products and cosmeceuticals to create things that might in fact protect us from the skin? BASF is actually doing quite a bit to develop studies and methodologies to test the efficacy of ingredients and product formulations for protecting the skin against pollution. What are the factors that you might need to address in products that would help protect you from pollution? Problem number one that needs to be solved is the aspect of anti-adhesion. Products that would be formulated to prevent pollutants from adhering to the surface of the skin. Now, BASF um, has created a, te an, a test to evaluate products and their ability to do this. The test is an in vivo test on actual skin, so it will give some idea of how different products might um, protect against the adhesion of pollutants to the surface of the skin. So that would be a really important way to reduce our overall exposure. And based on what they have conveyed through the media, they have identified that some probably some combination of polymers, emollients, and emulsifiers that influence the ability of a product to prevent pollutant adherence. The second factor that you need to consider as well is anti-penetration. You want products that not only prevent things from adhering, but you have to keep in mind that a lot of the particulate matter and pollution has coatings on it that can seep into your skin. So products should not only keep pollutants from adhering, but keep things from seeping down in. Because remember I said that, that pollutants, they can, they can actually get into the deeper layers of your skin to cause more damage. Um, BASF has a test that is a lab-based test, uh, so not in vivo, in vitro. It's a permeability model that will test the ability of different compounds to prevent penetration into the skin of different ingredients and different formulations, which is really cool. It seems rational to expect that certain polymers might be better than other, others at preventing the penetration. And then the third aspect to consider in skincare manufacturing is cleansing. The ability of cleansers to remove stuff off the surface of the skin. Uh, pollutants, I've always emphasized how important it is to use a cleanser once a day to remove this stuff at the end of the day. But how well do, do cleansers actually do that? I truly don't know. Um, BASF um, has designed a model to actually start testing this, uh, specifically looking at oil-based cleansers to see how they, you know, the relative abundance of different emollients in them helps with actual removal of pollutants. So it's really cool that BASF has these different models and assays that they have developed to address this. And I think it's going to be a really important part of our skincare products and skincare manufacturing moving forward into the future. And I look forward to seeing what they come up with and the technologies they develop but they haven't developed them yet, so don't fall for any claims as of yet. A lot of the products claim, that claim to have pollution-fighting ingredients have antioxidants in them. And antioxidants can help scavenge free radicals that are generated from pollutants. Unfortunately, a lot of antioxidants are not super stable in skincare products, so whether or not they actually fight off those free radicals that are generated is hard to say, and whether or not they prevent pollutants from adhering to the skin, seeping into the skin, um, and whether or not they help in the removal of them hasn't been substantiated. So I see that a lot of, most of the time, ingredients that, that are you know, mostly antioxidants claiming to fight pollution. <laughs> so now that I have terrified you about the role of pollution in the health of your skin, what can you do to protect it as a consumer now, based on what I told you about the fact that we really don't have skincare products or ingredients dialed in yet to actually address the pollution aspect. The number one thing that you can do as a consumer to protect yourself um, and to protect the health of your skin is what I say in 99.9% .9 of all my videos, and that is protect your skin from ultraviolet radiation by wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen and, and a hat, you know, sun protective clothing and avoiding staying outdoors and during peak sun exposure. Remember back to the beginning of the video, 
Pollution creates a lot of free radicals. Pollution plus ultraviolet radiation, it's a double hitter. So you need to protect your skin from the sun. Obviously don't smoke, eat a balanced diet that has plenty of fruits and vegetables that are packed with antioxidants that will help your body fight off those free radicals. At the end of the day, cleanse your skin to remove pollutants as best that you can. Uh, you know, we don't know how well each cleanser or what cleansers do this the best. We don't know that yet, but at least wash your face. It's important to the health of your skin anyway. So that is important. And use a moisturizer at the end of the day after cleansing the skin to really help your skin barrier recover. And at nighttime while you sleep, that is really when your skin goes to work even more at fighting some of these free radicals and recovering antioxidants and that sort of thing. So using a moisturizer can really help keep your skin hydrated as you sleep overnight. During these reparative processes that occur, you tend to lose more water. So the moisturizer really helps that and helps keep your skin hydrated. So that's another thing that you can do to help reduce the burden of damage related to environmental pollutants. And, you know, I mentioned consuming uh, antioxidants in your diet through fruits and vegetables in their natural form and drinking green tea. You guys, if you want to check out Peak Tea, definitely take advantage of my coupon code down below. They are fantastic. They're very delicious. Yeah, I particularly enjoy having the ginger tea at night and the sun goddess matcha in the morning. The turmeric is also really delicious. I like to have that mid-afternoon oftentimes. So definitely check them out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.